Rogers. Now, you've been described as being one of the most influential producers in history of popular music. That's a huge title. How, how have you sort of uh, changed with the industry? Because you've been doing it for such a long time. Um, I'm not sure I've changed that much. The industry has changed yeah. a lot. And, um, and I've just tried to stay consistent. I've yeah. tried to stay focused. And as the industry shifts up and down like life does, I just try and be flexible and go along with it. Yeah. The one thing that I always committed to is quality and serving my artists and serving the project. Yeah. And I think that that doesn't change regardless of where the industry is coming from. Yeah. Because uh, at the end of the day, what we're known for is the quality of the work. Yeah. They, you don't think about the you, you don't worry about the landscape of the industry because you can't control that yeah. I've never been a real mover and shaker uh, or at least had any significant force over it other than moving and shaking with my music or making yeah. people's bodies move and shake yeah. so if I can keep doing that then I'll be fine you've worked with some really amazing artists like Madonna Aretha Franklin Grace Jones tell me a bit about that um about working with amazing artists. Yeah, you're that's used to my that. job. You're used to that, yeah. <laughs> that's just my job. Um, I, you know, the first, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that, so we're not just talking about amazing artists, we're talking about stars in a way, yeah. because I always look at everyone I work with, uh, any, everyone that I work with, I think they're amazing because yeah. I wouldn't be working with them if I didn't yeah. believe that. Um, the very first star I ever worked with was Diana Ross. So. As a child, I'm working with one of the biggest stars on the planet. And thank God I did that. And thank God it wasn't easy yeah. because it prepared me for, you know, the, the Madonnas, the Bowies, the Duran Durans, everything after that was honestly a piece of cake. So to have one of the hardest jobs of my life happen early on in my career, um, it's made my relationship with superstars like a person like David Bowie, yeah. it's, it's like a pleasure. It's, yeah. it, it's like a gift from heaven. Working with Daft Punk is just heaven. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, those are the days that you say to yourself, I can't believe that this is my life. I can't believe this is my job. And I can't believe they're going to pay me. Yeah. And if we get a hit, they're going to really pay me, which is incredible. So have you always known that music was what you were made to do? Yeah, I started playing mu music. Um, at around five and a half, six years old. Um, when I was seven, I knew that I wanted to be a band leader, not just a musician. Yeah. I used to pretend to be the band leaders that I would see in films. Yeah. And I would pretend to be outside, you know, conducting and doing the yeah. whole thing. When I walked down the street, I would actually score my walking. So, you know, I'm going from place to place. Yeah. And if I felt like I was in an adventurous mood, I'd have music that was like Errol Flynn, like swashbuckling type of dun da da dun da 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 So um, uh, that's, music is just a part of me. It's infused in my DNA. Um, I, I don't have a choice. You know, years ago, Grace Jones put out a record called Slave to the Rhythm. Yeah. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's my theme song. So have you got much planned for the next year in the future? The next year is absurd. I have um, God knows how many records I've written and performed on. Um, a, a record number of live performances yeah. this year. Um, you know, records with Daft Punk, Etienne Daho, Avicii, Geta, Chase and Status, yeah. Ten Snake. I mean, just on and on. Just, Endless I hate to, to start listing because then I'll forget someone, but yeah. I have a lot of records coming out. Yeah. Um, a lot of songwriting, a lot of guitar playing. Yeah, I'm yeah. very, very happy. Exhausted, but happy. So yeah. what goes through your mind before you go on stage? Um, it changes every time. Yeah. All I care about is doing the absolute best show we can possibly do. That's the main thing that we're committed to. And uh, if you notice our shows, um, they sort of start with a moment of silence. When my partner passed away, Bernard Edwards, you know, he and I founded this band. Yeah. And um, 
you know, playing this music, even though it's disco, it's fun, it's up-tempo music, um, it's, a, it's sort of like a spiritual experience for me. So that, hitting that stage is paying tribute to um, my partner and paying tribute to a movement that accepted a weird guy like me in their, yeah. in their embrace. I mean, the disco movement was so open that a guy like me, I was this total wacky hippie who yeah. played um, jazz fusion music and I wrote my first dance record called Everybody Dance, Do 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 Clap Your Hands and it was yeah. a hit. From that moment, I've never looked back. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming and speaking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. You're watching Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer.